Hello everyone, I am going to show you now how you carry out hypothesis testing 1 in SPSS. We are going to look at the variable highest level of schooling in order to find a subset, a sample, uh, of university doctorates, students or individuals who have indicated that they have or hold a doctorate degree and we are curious to see if they have a considerably higher income than the average Canadian. So I'm working with the census 2011 uh, data set. So let us look at this variable highest level of schooling and remember that it's HLOSP and it's 14 stands for university or a doctorate degree. Okay, remember that hypothesis testing one is composed of three sections. So when you have to carry it out, first you have to select the given subset of variables. So you go to data, select cases, click on select cases and you click on the if condition, if condition is satisfied. So again, data, select cases, if condition is satisfied. You click on the if condition and you'll select the given variable, which was highest level of schooling. So you click on age, highest level of schooling. There you go. Same variable, which I discussed, variable 11 is equal with 14 because basically um, that is the code which captures all um, doctorate degrees or individuals who hold a doctorate degree. So you click on continue and on OK. Remember, I told you that in the output uh, window, you will, you will see that the if condition has been carried out. And if you go back to the original data set and you switch to the data view, you will see that everyone in your data set who does not hold a doctorate degree is going to be eliminated. So your sample is basically only composed of respondents who have indicated that they are holding a doctoral degree. I'm curious how many there are because I, for example, a thousand respondent number 1321 has indicated that he has a PhD. See, 14. The code is 14. Okay. Now, the first part of hypothesis testing one was to separate the sample, which you are going to test uh, if it has different characteristics than the whole population at large. So we decided to see if people have a PhD, if their income is statistically significantly higher than those who don't not do not or compare to the average average Canadian. So you click on analyze, compare means and one sample t test. So there you go. This is hypothesis testing one analyze compare means and one sample t test. You click on it and you see the one sample t test window opening where you have a test variable that you have to select and the test value. Remember that the test value is always the value that you enter after you have looked it up in statistics because it is the population average. So in our case it would be the average Canadian's income in 2001 because our data set stems from 2001. And that is something you have to look up in other statistics or, as I said, if you're unable to look up the test value, you will have to estimate it. I will show you the second exercise, uh, how you estimate the given value. But remember that we, we're, we stick with 25,000 that we have used also in class. And now the other test variable that I have to select is basically the interval ratio variable income for which the sample average will be calculated only for students who have a PhD. Do you want to change the color scheme of the group? No, leave me alone. What is this? Okay, so now let's go for total income total household income or total income there you go this is a total income category 
see in options, you see that we're working at 95% confidence level, and that's it. So basically, we hit OK. Alrighty. Interesting. So what we see here, first, always take your time to look at the first output, the one sample statistics, which always indicates what is going on with your sample basically what is going on in the data set and then when you jump from this window to the other one you answer the questions if these underlying characteristics can be generalized to the whole population so what do we see we see that we have solely six observations that's not many observations and the average income for these six observations is twenty nine thousand dollars which is higher Oh, this is very upsetting. Which, okay, which is higher than uh, the population average of twenty-five thousand that we just entered. So, the average Canadian in two thousand one earned twenty-five thousand, and those who have indicated that they have a doctorate degree earn twenty-nine thousand. Uh, I believe that this is lower because maybe in our sample a lot of uh, postdoc students were asked how much they are making. Those students have a PhD degree, but the top postdoc doesn't pay more than thirty thousand a year. So I think that uh, their lower average compared to a professor's income is lowering the O to word average, and also there are very few observations. Now the question is. Is this difference statistically significant? It's a difference of $4,000 on average. Um, and in order to answer that question, you have to look at this significance level here. Remember, if this significance is lower than 5%, lower than 0 0.05, you reject the null hypothesis. And if it's higher, you fail to reject it. But also, the third step in hypothesis testing one is to remember that you also have to divide this significance by two. So basically, when you divide this, you would receive something close to 0 0.2, I don't know, 18, which is, of course, higher than 5%, so you fail to reject the null hypothesis. So your null hypothesis was that there is no statistically significant difference between the sample average of PhD holders versus the average Canadian's in income. And the difference we are seeing in our sample occurred due to random chance, maybe a biased sample, right? Uh, and here in this case, we failed to reject a null hypothesis, so we have to accept it. And I believe that the significance turned out to be higher than 5% just because we have very few observations. So it's very hard to generalize based on six individuals' income who have earned a PhD uh, that all PhD earners, the whole population of PhD earners or those students who have a PhD or individuals who have a PhD earn significantly higher than the average Canadian. This is also your T obtained value, just for information. And um, yes, this is this is the end of the test.